purposes. So I talk about a different style of communication for project leaders than for a project manager. Uh, then I come to lean thinking. Then I talk about meetings. There's, you know, this is something which is uh, uh, our country and, and throughout the nation, uh, throughout the world, we are losing literally billions of dollars on, on unnecessary meetings. Right. And I call it meta site, which is death of resource efficiency by meetings. And that's one of the things which I talk about is how to use lean thinking to find what the, uh, the right meetings to run. And per se, meetings are not non-value added, but there are some meetings which are non-value added. How to find the right ones and how to run those meetings is what I talk about. Uh, the other thing which is, uh, you know, kind of a different way approach to doing things is I'm saying project leaders need to take the risk, but they need to calculate, you know, do the calculation, do the math uh, before they take that risk. Because ultimately, you know, if you always play it safe, you're not going to take that next leap forward. So risk taking is a big piece of leadership. So with all these steps, I just lost your audio deal. With all these okay. steps, <coughs> how many projects conceivably can a project leader run? I mean, you know, this is you have a lot of a lot of detail in this, a lot of different things that you know might seem micromanaging, but they're not micromanaging. It's helping helping tilt the needle towards that direction or the outcome, the predicted outcome that you'd like to see have happen. Yes, actually, it's exactly the opposite of micromanagement. In fact, I am asking the leaders to give up their you know role as as being an expert in everything. Okay. They trust the people uh, and, and let them do the job and get out of their way. So sometimes the project manager can be the biggest problem to the project. So uh, I talk about a lot of different things in, in this area, so how to focus on what is critical to the project and uh, how to focus on the value-added pieces of the project. And that's a big leap of faith to do that. It's a big leap of faith. Because of the, the the economy that we're in, and the way management schools, business schools, even engineering schools have trained us, is that uh, the responsibility for the project outcome is yours, and you need to kind of watch these things. But the responsibility for raising the water level and the skill and the knowledge of your team is really what your responsibility is. That is exactly where where we are failing the most. Uh, is we're focused more on just the results and not developing the people and that's one of the pillar 12 talks about appreciating assets and what that means is who are the who are the uh, you know what is the asset in your organization which truly appreciates and that is the people and i give you a formula of how to keep appreciating your assets and how to use them in the right way yeah and there have been studies where organizations which have been successful in doing that have shown a 200 person increase in profits even in a down economy those are big numbers those are big numbers i want to get the volume up a little bit so what's the big hope you know for your book i mean you've released it now people are starting to see it they're finding out about a deal what would you like to really see what would your legacy be with this book uh, this is just the start. Um, this is not a legacy. It's a, okay. it's a start to a legacy because I think um, uh, there is so much, you know, as you see, this is a 700-page book. And, uh, uh, you know, I've not even begun to, to talk about the leadership aspects, which uh, are the huge gaps we are facing right now. There is a big reason we are in this mess today in a global scale. And people need to understand those things and how to... Um, you know, uh, focus on, on, on what is creating this problem, finding the root causes and taking to the next level and also changing the paradigm. The thing is, if you keep banging your head against the wall and expect the wall to move, that's not going to happen. And in some organization, that's what I see is they keep doing the same thing, expecting different results, you know, uh, 
you're going to see a lot of blood. That's all what's going to happen because the wall is not going to move. And so I'm, I'm trying to create new ways of looking at things. So the power of visualization, which I've created, is a brand new way of running projects and innovating. Today, innovation is what made you know, our country great and uh, the world needs some of these techniques to take things in a much you know, quicker way to the next level, but also in a more responsible way. It cannot be done you know, just for the sake of creating things. There has to be a, a higher consciousness behind it. Yeah. And you know, companies, companies now as well, with all the uh, merger and acquisition and roll-ups of companies that happen, and especially the globalization, how people are looking for acquisitions all across the globe, that to integrate them fully into their their vision of what the, the, the mission is, what their true north is, is more and more and more and more difficult because now you have to align all these resources and now you have big teams all over. For small companies like mine, it's, it's a little bit easier because we can control and see with inside our four walls. But as you start getting bigger and bigger and you have four walls all over the globe, it gets a little bit more difficult, right? That is exactly where... I talk about one of the pillars is on data, and if you go, you know, a few hundred years back, data was, you know, was uh, very limited. Today, the pendulum has, you know, swung in a completely different direction, and we have, you know, we are in the age of too much information. And in that age, how do you take and create, find the value-added information? Because information is what is required to make your decisions. And as, as, as we are getting all these, you know, new technology coming in, new feedback coming in to the people, it is making things more and more challenging. And my prediction is project management, they are, in, you know, instead of helping these tools, helping them, they're going to be, uh, you know, actually uh, impending the, uh, or, or impeding the progress of projects because there is too much information going into from various sources. Right. Right, right, right. And, and even in our small organization, it's, oh my God, the information. And we ask ourselves all the time, what is this information telling us? Does it even, does it even want to do, uh, you know, point to the results and, and, and give us some kind of facts about what's going on? So that's a huge challenge. And <clears throat> Pete, you, you've been speaking to all around and you're going to have a bunch of speaking engagements. Where, how can people find you, and, and where are you going to be speaking next? Sure. Uh, I'm going to be the closing keynote speaker for the International Lean Six Sigma Conference in Florida okay. on March 1, March 1 of this year. And then uh, I'll be heading out to um, uh, Malaysia to speak at a conference uh, hosted by Napoleon Hill. And... Uh, uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra, who is world-renowned, and myself are the keynote speakers there, and also the grandson of Napoleon Hill is going to be one of the speakers there. So it's a very elite group, and I'm honored to be part of that. Yeah, and the Lean Six Sigma event <coughs> in March. You know, this, this event is growing and growing and growing every year. You've been attending that for a while now, I think, correct? Yes, I have. Yeah. And what else do you have in store for the new year, Adil? Uh, I'm actually, one of the things I talk about in this uh, book call is called uh, Pinnacle Performance Zone. To me, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest issues I face while leading um, projects, and I've run about 300 plus projects, is the stress level. And I'm looking at it from a human point of view, and the amount of stress today in organization is at an all-time high. And if we do not address this, is the this is literally the silent killer of people. Mm -hmm. And the the healthcare costs and just things are going to you know go completely out of whack if we do not do something about it. So one of the things I've done is actually I'm releasing a product which is a, a very advanced way of uh, self-regulating your stress. Okay. It's a it's basically a a, 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 a software which you use. But you're not playing with a keyboard or a mouse, but literally you're playing with your mind. 
So you hook up some kind of electrodes to your head, like a headset? Well, it's, yeah, it's on your fingers, and you're going to be able to interact with it, and it's, it's a very advanced way, and I'm hoping the human resource departments, what I'm hoping to do, Carl, is to create labs around the organizations and have them literally use this and help the people in the organization, you know, stay on an even keel throughout the day and, you know, be at the peak, you know, as I call it, the clinical performance zone. Just like athletes have to be in that zone every time to perform, organizations are no different. They need to know how to get to that zone, and I'm giving them a way to do that. That's a fantastic tool, and, and just what you said to me after flying down to Orlando, flying back, hitting my office, you know, I'm wiped out today. So I need, I need, I need one of those pinnacle performance zones now. Maybe a couch in here with some waterfall music or something like that going on. You, you really will not need that because it's audiovisual feedback. So you will actually get into a, a place where you know. It would be a completely different environment for you. And within about 10 minutes, you can actually come to that zone uh, very easily. Really? Well, I'm going to look forward to that. And remember, you can always beta test up here with us. Absolutely. Call me. Call me down. We will, we will definitely do that. So any final words that you want to have? We have our half hour almost up here. Anything you'd like to tell our audience, Ed, will put up how to, how to contact you, your email and web address, and any closing notes that you'd like to leave our uh, listeners with and viewers? Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, I think uh, Aaron is going to put up my contact information. Uh, so my email address is at eliclinicalprocess.com. <coughs> Uh, you know, look for me at pinnacleprocess.com. Uh, you know, I, I uh, really hope you guys can, you know, uh, if you have questions, send it to me through the Lead Nation and hope you guys can pick up the book and uh, get a few gold nuggets out of it. It's definitely a lot of gold nuggets in the book. And, and I referred to a bunch of people, their thought leaders at this group that I was with uh, uh, yesterday and today at the L. Excuse me. And they're going to be at the Lean Six Sigma conference. So if you and I email back and forth, I'll tell you who to look, look out for because they, they have a big challenge ahead of them. And they're, they're up to the challenge. These guys and gals there are ready to do the, do the work. Um, as well, if you're in the Northeast, we'd love to have you here come to the Vibration Nation because I really want to do a show with you one-on-one -on -one live here in the studio where we can talk about these and get an assessment and, and talk about things we see. And you can talk with some of the people out here and see what ticks because you, you have such depth and breadth to your knowledge and, and real insight to people, to leadership, to you know, the holistic approach of, of not only work, not only fun, but taking care of yourself, which is really important. Thanks, Paul. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Beautiful. All right. And uh, we'll be posting a deal stuff up on Lean Nation Facebook. We'll have it on Ustream. And next week, back on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, we'll be joined by Dave Tucker and Bruce Gladwin, the Pro Model Microsoft 2011 Partner of the Year. And they're going to be on the show with us talking about some new innovative things that they have for this process improvement and operational excellence. So we're over and out today for the Lean Nation. <laughs>